side because today I'm going to be reading Free as a Bird. It's the story of Malala and it's written by Lena Mouth Maslow. Don't ask me what I did. Ask me what I did. What what I what I did not do. I did not clip he, her wings, and that's all. When she was born, some people sighed and shook their heads. A girl, they whispered, "What well, bad luck." Her father looked into her eyes and fell in love. Malala, he whispered, and named her after Malala of Maywand, a Pashtun pun hero, whose, who, whose fearless words gave courage and turned defeat into triumph. Malala's father ran a school for boys and girls. He took her tiny hand into his and, and led her through the hall. Malala would sit in the classroom filled with, with older children and she would listen. And before she could really speak, she wandered the empty rooms and cheeks. As Malala grew, she realized that women in Pakistan did not have the same rights as men. Women, like her mother, had to hide their faces. They were expected to marry young and have children. They could not be anyone they wanted. They could not be anyone they wanted to be when they grow up. Malala watched her brothers fly kites from the roof. She wanted to be free like the kites. She wanted to fly. Malala, she said she would not follow those rules when she grew up. And while lovers around would um, from in a disproof, her father would smile and say, That's my daughter. Malala will be free as a bird. As Mal um, and Malala did feel free within the doors of her school, within the covers of brief taking books, within the patterned pages of um, calculus of the transit. She loved to participate in public speaking contests at school and, and would often that way. Her father said, you should be a politician. Mala laughed and shook her head. She would be a doctor. Her father said, you could help create so a social state where, where any girl can become a doctor. But then, the, the new enemy came to Pakistan. At first, the, the enemy hid within a radio. They told the people what to do. They told the people that girls could, not, could no longer go to school. Then, the enemy came out of hiding. They punished people 
who did not listen to them. They blew up schools for girls. The, the government sent the, an army to fight the enemy, and the war began. At, at night, Malala and her brothers hid in their parents' room, and two sides fired at each other. But during the day, Malala um, secretly went to school. Malala's father was not afraid. He spoke out and said, people to stand up. The, enem the enemies demand. Malala watched her father's speeches. She, she said to herself, why don't you go and fight for girls' rights? Fight to make Pakistan a better place. Malala's mother said, speaking up is the only way that, that things will get better. So Malala began to talk about the importance of school for girls. No one will stop me, she said. I will get my education. But the, the enemy began to threaten Malala and her father. They told Malala's father, don't teach girls They told Malala, don't talk about girls in education. One day, Malala told father told her she should start speaking out because it was getting too dangerous. But Malala said, this is now my call. You, you were um, the one who said that if I believed the greater than our lives. Um, then a voice is, well, only multiply. I will protect your freedom, Malala said. Her father. Carry on with your dream. But the day came when he could not protect her. This is just a, a blank page, you guys. This is... For seven days, Malala slept and dreamed. She awoke in the hospital. She was told that the enemy had tried to end her life, but she survived. Malala was no longer in her be beloved country of Pakistan. She, she was now in England, where girls uh, are afraid to go to school and learn. But she knew that girls and boys in many countries could not. Some of the countries were too poor. Others were always at war. And still, others didn't think education was necessary, especially for girls. Malala would not keep silent. So, so, she began to travel around the world and speak to girls and boys, to teachers, reporters, to leaders and presidents and queens, to anyone who would listen. I speak not for myself, but for all girls and boys. I raise up my voice, not so that I can shout out, but so that those in voice can be heard. Those who have fought for their rights, 
um, their right to live in peace, their right to be treated with dignity, their right to equally of opportunity, their right to be educated. One child, one teacher, one, one pen and one book can change the world. And Malala's father watched and said, look at her, don't you think? Malala's a great person. She's meant for the skies. The end. I hope you like this book. Um, it's really, it's really good because back then they just didn't, want, they didn't want to go to school like that. I know. But I'm just one second, one second, one second. I'm just kind of putting the book. Bye, guys.